So what we do in a very simple way is first, let's go to our Spring State machine, then let's see what JDK 1.8 and then Java, and then what we do is, let's generate demo19.zip. Let's import this demo19.zip. New project from existing sources. And then whatever we have imported, let, let's expand that. So we have see any downloads demo 19. That means I just need to make sure that I have a POM file when I import from IntelliJ. I just need to give the POM folder here. Say okay. Do I get a POM.xml? Am I here? Demo 19. It's a specified path cannot be found. Then I say okay and then I say POM.xml importing now. 19 demo, say next, say next. My JDK is pointing correctly. I'm going to call this as demo spring state machine. And then I am going to import that in a new window. And after I import that, I'm going to add a small dependency. You know, it's downloading everything related to Spring. This is basically a Spring demo project. And I need to make sure that I just have to, after downloading a Spring State machine, we'll put a dependency for Spring State. And uh, the dependency is here. This is the dependency. Let's see if we can download this now. Before that, let's try to discuss credit card states. So when you swipe a credit card, what exactly happens? How exactly the money, whatever is there in your credit card goes to the seller? Let's discuss some of the states here. So first state is authorization. That means a credit card holder takes his credit card, buys something at the merchant, purchases something with the credit card. The merchant swipes the credit card in the, in the merchant's machine and then the merchant's machine will take the credit card details to the acquirer. This is your acquirer. And then the acquirer forwards credit card details to the credit card network, which is could be your Chase MasterCard or Visa card. And then ultimately it reaches, reaches to the issue bank. So if your credit card maybe say Capital One, then it reaches to Capital One. So typically this is what it happens in authorization, which is shown here. Second is authentication. What exactly happens in authentication? The card holders, the merchant, what he would do is he issues a stray slip to the customer Merchant's payment terminal collects all the approved transactions in a bunch. And uh, in authentication, we are trying to check basically if the 
the issuing bank is verifying the validity of the customer's credit card. So you do have some fraud protection tools such as address verification, card security codes, the CVV number which you give in your credit card, like CVV, CVV2, CVC2, and CID. So the issuing bank receives the payment authorization request from the credit card network. The issuing bank validates the credit card, checks the amount of available funds, matches the billing address to one on the file and validates the CVV number. The issuing bank, like say for example, Capital One, approves or declines the transaction and sends back the appropriate response to the merchant through the same channel, right? What we showed in the beginning. There's a credit card network and the acquiring bank or processor. Now, once the merchant receives the authorization from C Capital One, the issuing bank will place a hold in the amount of the purchase of a cardholder's account. The merchant's post terminal will collect all the approved authorizations to be processed in a batch at the end of the business day. The merchant provides the customer a receipt to complete the sale. This is the second state, the second step in authentication. So we can call that first the credit card is getting authorized. We can maintain a statement as authorization. The second one is authentication. The third one is clearing and settlement. So what exactly happens in the clearing settlement? In the previous, we did see that the merchant completely receives authorization from the bank, right? Now this, whatever is there, the state of the card, now the amount which is there, it, it is in hold and the merchant's person will collect all approved authorizations to be processed on batch at the end of the day, business day. The merchant provides customer receipt to complete the sale. Now you see here, the shoe bank here in case A versus Capital One will place hold in the amount of the purchase on the credit card holder's account. So the amount is still not cleared or it is in the stage of holding. So that's why they say at the end of each business day, the merchant sends the approved authorizations in a batch to the acquiring bank or processor. The acquiring processor routes the batch information to the credit card network for settlement. The credit card network forwards each approved transaction to the appropriating issuing bank Usually within 24 to 48 hours of the transaction, the issuing bank will transfer the funds, less an interchange fee, which it shares with the credit card network. And the credit card network pays the acquiring bank and the acquiring processor their respective percentages from the remaining funds. The acquiring bank, which is, you know, our case, Capital One, creates the merchant's account for cardholder purchases less a merchant discount rate. The issuing bank posts the transaction information to cardholder's account. The cardholders receive the statement and pays the bill. So this is the third clear and settlement. So we just see all the different states. What we have here now is a spring state machine. And we did give a dependency for the spring state machine. This is the dependency which is important for spring state machine core. So let's have a class known as credit card states. And this class is going to maintain all the states of the credit card. So as I discussed previously, that we are going to talk on different credit card states. So 
So let's start, you know, uh, recording the events now. The first event, which has for our credit card behind the scenes is the step one, which is acquiring bank. So let's call this as acquiring. Then next is authorization. So authorization, let's have pre-authorization. The next one is post-authorization. what exactly happens in authorization. The Once you know that the acquiring bank, whatever is there, once you get acquiring bank, what when you swipe your credit card physically or submit the credit card, the payment is transferred to vendor's account, right? So the recipient of the transaction is known as acquiring bank. So here, uh, the company can have like capital. One can have its own network acquirer, or you can go through the visa, right? The visa network acquirer. Then starts authorization. So this is another state which we need to reflect when the credit card is getting authorization. So the acquiring bank sends information available on the credit card to the card companies such as Visa, American Express, and MasterCard. So the process is carried out to determine the issuing bank. So there is a big difference between acquiring bank and issuing bank. Acquiring bank is a medium like Visa or American Express or MasterCard. And issuing bank is here. Like my credit card is Capital One, so issuing bank is Capital One. So this is the second state pre-authorization and post-authorization. In authorization, either I am blocked or I'm approved, right? And then the third state, which is known as confirmation. Let's put that state. Confirmation. And then The first one is transaction approved. Let's follow the Java coding convention. Let's say transaction approved. And the last one would be Settlement, right? So let's call this as settlement. So far, so good. So, what we did until now was that we have downloaded Spring Boot application. We have expressed the difference of Spring State Machine. And then we have written a class which is going to maintain the different states uh, in form of enum. Those are the events for us, right? Acquiring, pre-authorization, post-authorization, confirmation, transaction approval and settlement. What's the next process? So these are basically states. I would, you know, rather call them as states rather than events. Events is something which the state machine reacts for. So let's call this a state. 
So the credit card is an acquiring state. That means it is trying to acquire a network like Visa or MasterCard. The next is credit, the credit card is a state of authorization, free authorization. It's collecting all the data and post authorization is, you know, we are waiting for the results. So we get a confirmation whether it's accepted or rejected. And then third one is that if it is accepted, if our transaction got approved. And then the fourth one is the bill, right? What do you get? Settlement. That means we need one more class where we are going to have something known as events. So let's call that class as credit card events. So since these are states, now I feel like rather than describe them like just events, describe them exactly as states. So I would say this as acquire, would make me full if it's a state, then pre-authorize, post-authorize, confirm, and transaction approval. Settlement is fine. So these are more like nouns, right? So, so far so good. Now we have to describe another events. We have described the state. In the events, what we do is we just simply take this post it here and then we describe them as events. That is the reactions to the, you know, whatever status there. So I would state this as acquiring and uh, so now we need to configure the state machine. So what do we do for that? Let me recap, we wrote the credit card events. I did a few corrections here. Uh, we will first define the states. The credit card has the following states, acquisition, pre-authorization, post-authorization, confirmation, transaction approval, settlement. And uh, it also has events. So what exactly the events do? The events push the states in a state machine from one state to another state. So that is why there is a need of events. So that means if I want a credit card state from to go from acquisition to pre-authorization, this can be done only with an event. So which event does this? The, if I send an acquiring event, then what exactly happens is the credit card state goes, you know, from in a state, uh, you know, uh, I have acquired. So if I send a it, it, the initial set is acquisition. If I send it, even as acquire, acquire, then it goes to authorization. So it has moved from acquisition to pre-authorization. Then I send one more event. Like I sent, I want to push this to post authorization. Then I send pre-authorization. Then it gets pushed to next post authorization so on right so what is necessary is that you know you need an event to go from one state to another state so that's why i have initially defined the states then events now i have to configure state machine to say that 
if you want to go from one state to another state then this is the event which will take this from state a to state b or state you know it will take from state of acquisitions to state pre-authorization but how do i do that so that is where we configure the state machine and to configure the state machine what the first and foremost thing we do is that if you have seen that we have defined enums because uh, rather than having final state values right which are immutable we will use enums which are also immutable and we will take a state machine which uses enums you know as uh, events and states so that's why i say extend enum state machine the first and foremost thing and second what i do is i give my states as well as events to this so i have credit card states and i have credit card events the third thing obviously you know you have to define what's your initial state right so my initial state is acquisition and what are the other states which it has? So all of the states are present in this credit card state start class. Now comes the most important part as you're going to define which event transitions which from which state to which state. So you need to make sure that you have included all the necessary transitions here. So I have defined a transition of a state from acquisition to pre-authorization. And the event which does is pre-authorize. Then I have a transition from pre-authorization to post-authorization. The event which does is post-authorize. Then I have done a transition, say if I do a transition from post-authorization to confirmation the one which will do is this one let's see if any more states have been remained here uh, so the states which were there is acquisition pre-authorization post-authorization confirmation transaction approval is one more remained and then you have settlement so i need to move from confirmation to transaction approval and from transaction approval to settlement. So let's define those also. So again, what I say is I copy all this. Very easy. It's very easy to work on the state machine in Spring. Now what I do is anyhow it has reached confirmation, right? So now what I do is from confirm, from confirmation to, if I need to move to approval, it could be conditional moment also. But for now, for the sake of simplicity, we are going to take this as transaction approval. And how does it move to transaction approval? So the event which does this is transaction approval. One more event is there. Let's define that also. And that is transaction approval to settlement.
And how do I do this event? I had to send the event there. That's it, we have defined all the states now uh, in the state machine. We have, let me summarize this, well, how exactly we started. So we discussed about the credit card or uh, different states. And then uh, we discussed about let me reshare what I, what I was talking about. So, let's go here. We had a Page it was talking about. So let me reshare what I'm telling. So the first one is these are the different states, right? When you go to a cross here, you buy something, you first, when you swipe that card in the machine, in their machine, the first step is authorization. That means the merchant must obtain approval, right? For payment from the issuing bank, like Capital One, because you give a Capital One credit card as an example. So this is what it tells about. It's the card holder who presents his card to the merchant. The merchant sends the credit details to the acquirer. Acquirer is like Visa, Fi or MasterCard or something like that. The acquirer you know, places this transaction into the card credit card network. The credit card network you know, in turn talks to issuing bank. If the issuing bank authenticates, right? What it does is it says, yes, I, I authenticate this person to you know present this card to you. And then, I'll, and then what happens is that it does the validation whether this person has balance and all then the merchant takes out the money and then in the clearing and settlement at each business day, the merchant sends the authorization batch to the acquiring bank or processor again. The acquiring processor hours the batch information to credit card network or settlement. The credit card network forwards each approved transaction to the appropriate issuing bank. So these are the kind of different states which are there in the credit card. Now, After discussing that, we went to the code, right? And in the code, we started discussing about, we first wrote the states. We first wrote the states of acquisition, pre-authorization, post-authorization, confirmation, transaction approval, settlement. Then we wrote the events and then we configured the machine. So for now, you know, I will stop here. Next, we are going to build a system wherein we are going to get this events, right? Like for example, as soon as I swipe my card, what event should happen? And uh, if the authorization has to stall, start, I need to get a signal that the card is getting authorized. So I'll, we will do this through a Kafka that as soon as you know, the card is swiped, maybe some REST API sends a signal 
for the event class and the event class transitions from one state to another state. But for now, uh, hold it tight in your mind that this is a system we are working on, a state machine. We are leveraging state machine to manage a credit card system. A credit card system between a consumer, buyer, and a seller. Uh, what is the advantage of for you to learn about this? The advantage for you to learn is that when you know, know about a state machine in Spring, and when you know Kafka and you know Spring Board, the entire system of credit card processing will be easy for you to implement and also understand. For now, if you like this, hit a like on my video. If you want to subscribe, click on the subscribe button. Thank you.